Hi, welcome to another video of Stream Developers. In this tutorial, you discover how to build a Zoom or WhatsApp style Android video calling experience using the Compose SDK of Stream Video. Using Stream Video SDK for Android, your team can build apps for many use cases such as audio and video calling, live streams and audio rooms just in days. The resulting app in this tutorial looks like this. You can invite multiple people to join a call. The app supports picture-in-picture -picture mode. There are call controls for performing standard call operations such as muting and disabling the camera. There is a sound indicator as well as network quality indicator. I have divided this tutorial into different sections. We will begin by creating a new Compose project in Android Studio. I'll show you how to add the SDK as a dependency. We will create and join a call. We will use the SDK's video renderer to render local and remote participant videos. I will then show you how to render a full video calling UI. Finally, we will customize the video calling experience and recap. To get started with Stream Video, head to our website and go to Developer, Video and Audio. Over here, you can select your favorite SDK such as React, iOS, Android, and Flutter. React Native will follow very soon. Since we are creating an Android video calling app, I will select Android. In the Android documentation, we have different kinds of sample app tutorials such as video call tutorial, audio room tutorial, and live stream tutorial. Also, don't forget to check the main repository of the Android SDK on GitHub. Let's now jump to Android Studio. I will click New Project. Under Templates, make sure you select Phone and Tablet and choose New Compose Activity. I will call my app Video Call save it to a location. I will save it to my downloads folder. We now have an empty Compose project in Android Studio. Let's add the video SDK as a dependency. Let's reference a tutorial from our documentation. Under the tutorial section, we will select video call tutorial. Step 2 guides you on how to install the SDK. To install it, we need to add it as a dependency in the Gradle file of our project. It is recommended to use a latest version of Android. All the implementations here are optional if you are using the latest version of Android. I have Flamingo, so I will select only this part and copy. Then we go to the location where we saved the project. I'll go to my downloads folder under this folder. There are two versions of Gradle files. This one but we need to use the one under the app folder. So I will control click and open with Visual Studio Code. Then I will navigate to where we have the dependencies and add it here. Then let's save it and go back to Android Studio. Once we add the dependency, we have to also sync it in Android Studio. To do that, we go to the top right of the toolbar and click on this button sync project with Gradle files. Now the SDK has been successfully installed. Let's look at how to create and join a call. We can get the implementation code from the tutorial I showed earlier. This can be found under step three. So I'll copy everything here. We are now in the main activity Kotlin file. So let's replace the main activity class then I will add all the necessary imports. Let's now run the app to see what we have done. The app runs successfully, but we get an error that says join call failed because the token is invalid. This is expected because to be able to create and join a call, we need to set up the stream video client. For the sake of simplicity, we are going to do everything in the main activity Kotlin file. For a production app, you should initialize the stream video client in your application class or your dependency injection model. So here we have defined all these user properties with placeholders. 
From the tutorial I showed earlier, we are going to replace all these placeholders. Let's get the user credentials from the tutorial. You can see there is an API key. So for a production app, this should be the API key of your stream account. We have token which needs to be generated from your server side for a production app. But in this tutorial, we generated that for you. So I will copy the API key and paste it over here and replace the other properties as well. Let's look at a summary of the code. First, we create a user object. For a production app, this should be synced from your server-side integration. The user can be an authenticated user, a guest user, or anonymous. Secondly, we initialize the stream video client using an API key, the user and token. If you have a production app, you should initialize the stream video client in your application class or dependency injection model. But since we want to keep everything simple in this tutorial, we are now initializing it in the main activity Kotlin file. Next, we create and join the call after the client is created. And using this call.join method, we establish the connection for audio and video. Lastly, in the video team, we render the UI by observing the call state for the connection and participants. When the connection is successful, we display the call ID as well as the number of participants in the call. So let's run the app again. I'm using Moto E32 as my device. We now have a screen that says the call ID has one participant. That is how to create and join a call. Next, let's look at how to render a basic call-in UI using the video renderer. Using the video renderer, you can capture the microphone and camera output to display the local and the remote participants' videos. Before we can render local and remote participants' videos, we need to set up Android runtime permissions for camera and microphone usage. Let's go back to the tutorial again. The video rendering implementation can be found at step 5. So let's copy this sample code. We are still in the main activity Kotlin file. So let's replace the code under set content and add the necessary imports. In set content, the launch call permissions method will request permissions from the user once the call is initiated for the first time. Next, we have the video renderer implementation. This helps to display the local and the remote participant videos. Finally, the floating participant video displays the video of the local user that can be dragged to the different corners of the screen. Let's now run the app again to see what we have done. So this displays only the local participant, but we can also join from the web using the companion web app of stream video. So let's go to the tutorial and join from the web. This is possible because it is using the same caller ID. So I will click join. So I have shown you how to render a basic calling UI using the video renderer. But in an actual app, you need more than that. To go beyond the basic calling UI, we leverage the call content component of the SDK. This has three main components. We can, for example, use it to render an app bar containing information about the call, call controls, and indicators for when someone is speaking in the call, network quality indicator, and layout supporting more than two participants. The implementation now we have for the video team uses the video renderer. So let's update it to use the call content to be able to render fully featured call in UIs. So let's get the code from the tutorial. You can get this under step six. So let's copy this sample code. Now we can select the video team and replace it. So I'm going to remove everything here and replace it with the code. Our implementation now uses the SDK's call content instead of the video renderer, which renders basic UI. So let's run the app again. This renders the local participant video, but we can also join from the web as well. So let's go back to the tutorial again and join from the web. We can also perform standard call operations. We can flip the camera and mute the call and also disable the video. Let's move on to the last section.
by customizing the calling experience. The Video SDK provides a flexible way to customize the video calling experience. You can provide a fully custom calling UI, or you can use part of the SDK's UI component and mix them with your own UI components. You can also perform basic customization options such as changing color, font, images, and sound in the SDK. In this section, we want to swap the call controls. Let's go to the video team and add two properties. We can perform this under the customization section of the tutorial. So in the video team, we will add these two properties here. One for camera and the other one for microphone. Next, let's replace the call content implementation here with this code and add the necessary imports. So what we are doing here is that we are replacing the SDK provided call controls with a video camera icon, a mic icon, and a flip camera icon. So let's run the app again. So you can see the call controls are now different from the one that comes from the SDK. We now have three call controls instead of the four that comes as default from the SDK. We can perform the same call operations such as flipping the camera and then muting the audio and disabling the video camera. So this is all I have for you in this video. I showed you how to install the video SDK and set up the stream video client. We created and joined a call. We used the video renderer to create a basic calling UI and then we used the call content to render fully featured video calling UI. Finally, we customize the calling experience by swapping the call controls with a custom implementation. I hope you have enjoyed this tutorial and you now know how to get started with the Android Video SDK in building audio and video calling apps. Check out our documentation to learn more about the various use cases and the sample apps of the Video SDK. Thanks for watching this video.